Oh, here we go. Hey, YouTube. It's Josh Feinstein. This is Code Everest. I am super excited about what I'm about to begin. This is my attempt to build the Enigma machine from World War II. Uh, if you don't know what that is, in World War II, the Germans developed a machine, a sort of mechanical algorithm box that would encrypt and then decrypt secret messages during the war. Um, Alan Turing, uh, the important computer science figure, was able to develop a machine that could decrypt it, that helped the Allies win the war. Uh, there's a great movie about it starring Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, so yeah, this started because my brother sent me a text saying, hey, I think this would be cool for your channel. And I watched a YouTube video on how it exactly works, and it's pretty cool. It's actually not that complicated. Uh, and I think I'm going to be able to make a functioning version of it in JavaScript. So first, let's talk about what it does and how it works. It's a box. Uh, I'm going to put a link to that video in the description, by the way, so you can watch the same video I saw. It has keyboards. You type in the letter, and then it lights up with whatever letter you should write down as part of your encrypted message. Um, but if you type the same letter three times, it's going to give you three different letters because there's a lot of moving parts. The simplest part is there's a part at the bottom with wires. Um, and all that does is a one-to-one -one mix up of all the letters. Uh, it's, it's a straight up like cipher. If you type A, it might give you a G. If you type a G, it'll give you an A. If you type, uh, you know, X, it'll give you a Y. Um, so those were movable wires. So every day or every time you were doing a different message and you had your key, you would have to configure the machine to be set up in the exact same way to do the exact same encryption, decryption. Um, so that's the first part. The second part was there was three spindles, like gears inside that were hardwired to mutate uh, lettering. So each one of those was for 26 letters. And if you were to type an A, it would be a B. If you typed a whatever, they would, those would be mixed up. Um, but the thing was, you would type an A, that would become an F, and then it would go into the next spindle. It would take the F and spit out a Q. And then that would go to the next spindle. That would take a Q and it would spit out a, a B. And then that would be your answer. Here's where it gets really complicated. The first spindle would rotate. It would offset its own internal uh, rewiring uh, each time. And it would go around 26 times. On the 26th time, the second spindle would move once. So on 26 times 26, that spindle would move around a 26th time. And then the third spindle would click once. So you can see how the complexity just compounds and compounds and compounds with this device. The other thing that makes it even more complex is that the trigger point at which the second spindle will finally click once on a clock would be 12 o'clock, uh, or in this case, the 26th character. Once it gets to the Z, it would click once. That was a movable position. So in order to build this in JavaScript, I'm going to build a one-to-one -one cipher. I, I believe that the the wiring uh, mutating of strings was pairs, so A would be G, G would be A. So I'm going to make sure when I build that, um, it's not that the letters are slid around, but they're in pairs, and there were only 20 wires. So I'm only going to mix up uh, 20 characters in that alphabet. Once that goes into this Enigma machine algorithm, uh, I'm going to have three spindles that are hardwired for certain mutations, and I'm going to create an offset of a certain value that the function will receive as part of its key so that um, each time we uh, encrypt a character, the one spindle will move up every 26 times, the second spindle will offset by another, and, and so on. And then also it would be able to receive a starting position. Oh, sorry, the starting position is the offset, but it would also be able to um, no different positions at which the second and third spindle should click instead of just 26, just like the actual Enigma machine. So that's the plan. That's what I'm going to be building. So let's move over to our IDE here. Today I'm going to be using VS Code. And um, yeah, I'm sure I'm not the first person to do this. I haven't done any research because I don't, I don't want to be using anyone else's solution. I want to see what I can do uh, and how I try to solve this problem and see what I can learn from that. So the first thing, we're going to make our function. It's going to be called Enigma Machine. And it's going to take a lot of things. It's going to take in our message. Let's call it a message, which will be a string. Oh, here's the other thing that I forgot to mention. Let me go back here. 
The other layer of complexity is that you've got your three spindles, but they can be moved into any combination. And there's six combinations. You can do one, two, three, one, three, two, two, one, three, two, three, one, three, one, two, three, two, one. So not only can you move the pairs around for the letters for your original one-to-one -one switch of the letters, then you've got your spindles that all have their own different cipher. Each one of those rotates 26 times, clicks the next one in one of six combinations, and you can change their starting position offset, and you can change the position at which it will trigger the next one to click. So I can set the offset to 15 and say don't click until it hits 11. So it's going to go to 26, back to 0, then to 11, then the second spindle will click. Um, there's a lot of moving parts in this function. Um, I think I have a good handle on what I need to do, um, but it's, you know, it's always a lot, it's, it's, it's getting something from inside your head into the computer or on paper if you're a poet or onto your guitar if you're a musician. Uh, it's not as easy as, as just thinking about it. I wish there was a way I could just think this code into existence, but writing it is the challenge. Um, so let's see what we do. So we take our message, um, then we're going to take... I'm gonna half pseudocode. We're gonna take our like uh, I'm gonna call this the wire pairs. Then we're gonna take in our spindles are hardwired, so I'm gonna have those just be coming in. I have a separate JavaScript file for the spindles. Those are, I'm just gonna code. They're not gonna change, but the offset of them will change. So we've got our wire pairs. Uh, we've got our configuration. Um, one of six configurations for the order of the spindles. And then there's going to be our spindle one offset, our spindle two offset, our spindle three offset. And then there's the position at which the second spindle will rotate, and then the third. We only need two of those. So I'll call this um, uh, rotate point one and rotate point two and that will be I might rename these this is already getting messy you can see how this Enigma machine was a tough nut to crack mad props to Alan Turing and his team uh, all right so let me get rid of this make this a little wider this already looks like a mess now for my offset I'm gonna have this object of letter combinations but each time the first spindle clicks I need to offset that entire key value pair by one each time it clicks. And to do that with letters is going to be really difficult. So I'm going to use numbers. The internal workings of this machine are all going to be numerical. Um, so at this point, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to start, I'm going to build these spindles because there's no reason for you to watch me type objects with 26 values, uh, key value pairs. So I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. That was instant for you. Um, so I wanted you to see what I'm doing before I finish so you get an, a, a clearer idea. Uh, our function initially takes in this thing called wire pairs. I'm getting rid of that. I'm making our wire pairs, again, the, the thing that mutates 20 pairs, sorry, 10 pairs, 20 characters of the alphabet. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is take our initial message and using the wire pair one-to-one um, -one swap, I'm going to convert them into numbers. Uh, it's gonna be a lot easier to work with numbers, so we're just gonna use numbers. Um, so now, you'll see wire pairs, This is these are all one to one, A through Z is one through 26. Um, after I pause again, I'm going to change that, I'm gonna keep six characters the same number as they would be in sequence with the alphabet, and I'm going to uh, swap, uh, let's say if I want B to be J, I would make B10, and I'm gonna make J2, like that. So that's one swap pair. I'm going to make 10 pairs. Now, if you look here at the top, I've got import spindle 1, 2, and 3 from spindles.js. Here, um, I forgot to write export. I'm going to be exporting spindle 1, 2, and 3. And you'll notice here, oops, uh, these spindles are objects of values 1 through 26, um, and they're, they're also in order. These are going to be different than this first one. So, for example, I type in B to my Enigma machine, I get a 10, which is a J. So it goes to spindle 1, 10, that's going to spit out whatever I make it to later, let's say I make it 7. That's going to spit out a 7, go to spindle 2, and then it's going to give me whatever that does, going to go to spindle 3 as an 11, and it's going to give me a 24. That's my final letter in my uh, encoded message, uh, except 
after my first character that I type, spindle one is going to get offset by one. So that value now, if I type a, uh, if, if my result from my first type is a one, then it's going to go into spindle one as a one. But after that, it's going to go in as a two, and it's going to keep getting offset by one because that spindle's cranking. So the left and right columns are going to be off shifted by one each time I type a character. And then later, when I start writing the algorithm, you'll see that the offset of spindle two is then going to be increased by one after I go through the entire spindle one. Um, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to increment um, by one plus two plus three using a counter modulus 26 to reset after 26 to do my incrementation of each of the spindles. Um, so I'm going to uh, edit these three objects so that they're actually going to encrypt and we'll take it from there. Okay, I'm on my last spindle here. I found this website, uh, random.org. I typed in one through 26 and it spit out the same list but in a random order. I did it three times. And then for the wire pairs, I just picked nine letters and I swapped them, sorry, 10 letters and I swapped them with uh, 10 other letters. So if you're interested to see how I did this, um, I'm a human being, I'm not random. I'm sure neither is this. Uh, if you're interested, you can search YouTube for, uh, what is it, like math.random, why it's not actually random. Let me shut this AC off. I'm realizing it's probably a little noisy. Okay, so I'm almost done here. Six, 10, four, three, 23, 24, 17, 21. Now this is all fun in games. When it comes time to actually do this, what's really going to be hard is the uh, decryption. Uh, because then I have to write the same function for encryption with the same uh, arguments, but it's going to have to run backwards. All my plus ones will be minus ones. All right, so these are all my wire pairs. So let's go back to the full screen VS code. So the first thing I want to do, oh, see my function, I'm returning coded message dot join. Um, this is going to be an array. So how do I want to do this? First, we're going to take our message. Let message array equal message dot split. Oh, another thing is the empty spaces. That's going to have to get handled too if the message is multiple words, obviously. Um, I haven't seen anything about punctuation. I don't know if all these encoded messages in World War II had no punctuation or how they handled that. I've only seen letters. Um, but again, I'm not a World War II expert. <laughs> I just wanted to build an Enigma machine. All right, so that's going to be split. So we're going to have this array. And then we're going to do message array dot for each. So for each value, I want each element to become our code pair. What do I call wire pairs? Wire pairs at the current element. Actually, not for each. It's going to be a, a map. So let mm, I'm just going to chain it. So now our message array is going to be uh, a bunch of numbers. So if our message is hello, I would get 8, 4, 12, 12. Ah, uh, but you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to build this so that, not so that I just run all these little bits and pieces and then send them all to the spindle. It's going to be piece by piece, but I guess it's okay because this is the first step in each one to have this array here. So, yeah, that's okay. So I'm going to have our, our array because at, at the very first outset, L would be 12 twice, and then that would go to the spindle, and then spindle one would change L for the second time because that was one of the things with the Enigma, Enigma machine. Uh, duplicate characters would not spit out the same thing twice in a row. All right, so at this point, I'm going to pause just for a moment. So I just took a moment to 
set up my debugger in VS Code so I can do some console logging to see what's happening. So I ran Enigma Machine. The only thing it's doing so far is taking our initial message, splitting it into an array, and then mapping over it, making each element into the now wire pair uh, transmutation of that current element. And if you see here, I'm going to run it with hello. And I get 8, 4, 12, 12, 18. Now with our wire pairs, our H is now 8. Our E is now 4, our L is 12, 12, and so on. And I have here my uh, dash for spaces. So if I were to do uh, hello world, let me run this. You'll see that that space between the 18 and the next, uh, you know, this is the W, is now just a dash. That's how I'm going to handle the empty spaces. Uh, yeah, so that's working. The next step now is to pass it to my spindles. So here are my spindles. I move them into this file so I can access them quickly without having to go back and forth. So now let's see, what do we want to do? We want to do coded message equals message dot map. And then for each element, we're going to go to spindle one at that element. So let's see what happens. What do we get? Waiting for debugger to disconnect. It seems to be taking a while. Hmm. Never seen that happen. What do we have? An error. Message.map. Ah, it's not a function. Message array. Let's run this. What do we get now? Spittle one. <laughs> Typos. Ah, ah, interesting. Eight, four, twelve, twelve, eighteen. That is not what we want. That's what we had before. Let coded message. Oh, because <laughs> see, this is the silly stuff. I get sometimes I get so lost in the higher order stuff. I forget the basics. All right, so now we're returning the coded message. Uh, still no good. Oh, no. Yeah, these are different. So now we're getting 14, 24, 4, 4, 26. So let's, let's, do, let's go one letter at a time because I don't want to confuse you or myself. H, that's giving us a 14. So H comes in. It's an 8. It goes into spindle 1 as 8, comes out as a 14. And then let's try the letter P. Beautiful. It's a seven. Let's take a look. So P comes in as a six, goes into spindle one as a six, comes out as a seven. So here's where this is going to get fun. Let's say we're going to run this through all three spindles. So this is coded message one, two, and three. First it goes into spindle one, then it's going to go into spindle two. Then it's going to go into spindle three. Let's do the letter A. All right. I made a mistake. Ah, coded message three. And then I want to return coded message three. Let's run this. We're getting an 11. So what happens? A is a one. Spindle one becomes an eight. Spindle two, eight becomes a 25. And then spindle three, 25 becomes a seven. Ooh, interesting. That's not what we expect. Let's take, ah, duh. I got so excited for this to happen that I forgot that I have to pass each one the successive next coded encrypted piece. So now we get our seven. Let's try it with a B now that we know it works. And what do we get? What did I do now? Ah, a four. So let's see. Wire pair four, you type the four, uh, the B into uh, the Enigma machine, you get a 10. 10 goes into spindle one, you get a five. Five goes into spindle two, you get a 17. 17 goes into spindle three, you get a four. So now we have the beginnings of an Enigma machine. So we put in our hello, and we get this jumbled gobbledygook. But this isn't so hard to break, why? We're doing one-to-one -one, uh, mutations of, uh, of our message 
but we're just doing static mutations. We're, 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 yeah, we're changing it. We're changing it four times. We're just saying go from here to here to here to here. Big deal. The real trick is every time we put in a letter, the spindle one offsets. Every 26 times, spindle two offsets. Every 26 times 26 times here, spindle three offsets by one. That is going to be hard to break. So I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to make it so that our final array Actually, no, I was going to make it into back into letters, but we, we want to use numbers. It's easier to track. Uh, it's going to get hard to track, but I'm going to, I'm going to say this is the end of part one of Enigma Machine. I'm going to keep filming part two, um, so that's when it's going to start to get complicated. I'm going to use counters. Uh, I'm going to use offsets, and we're going to really see this thing come together, and we're, we're going to make this thing hard to crack. Uh, and once I complete that, I'm going to figure out how to rewrite this as a decoding algorithm to take our coded message with our set offsets and spindles and decode our message for our Enigma machine. So thank you for watching. Uh, as always, please like the video, subscribe, share it with your friends, send me some messages uh, about what you think, and I'm uh, looking forward to sharing part two with you as I continue on my journey to making my own JavaScript Enigma machine. Thanks for watching.